Okay, everybody, this episode is brought to you by Four Loco, our great friends at Four Loco. And let me tell you, this election season, no matter who gets elected, we're f***ed either way. So we might as well f*** ourselves, right, Riley Reed? That's right. And I'm here to help you learn how to f*** yourself. That's amazing. Thank you for being here. And two of the most alternative brands in American history have come together to collaborate on one mainstream product, a koozie, which I love. I love koozies. Not just any koozie. Not just any koozie. This koozie is in the mold of an arm, and it's you don't need to hit me with it, but thank you, Julia. This is the lovely. Let me put that in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Multitasking. You can, do that. you can multitask. This Four Loco USA is one of the best selling Four Loco flavors in the world. That's because it's American, and it's important to remember we're all Americans, and we could all come together with Four Loco to once again fuck ourselves. There we go. Riley's enjoying that beautiful USA Four Loco. I love America, so it's my favorite Four Loco as well. And you may think, you may look at this and say, oh, how do I get my own Four Loco koozie? Oh, well, all you have to do is go to fourlocoforum.com and you can get this limited edition koozie that you can put in your icy cold Four Loco beverage in and enjoy so many things at one time. It goes in your mouth and in yeah, your butt. Exactly. It does that. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's Riley Reed. It's Riley Reed times Four Loco, so that's great. And um, all pre-orders for the koozie will come with a coupon code for, coupon code for exclusive content from Riley Reed. That's right. Talk about incentive, huh? <laughs> Talk about incentive, huh, Julia? Are you sitting on it? No. <laughs> no, I'm holding it right here. My new favorite koozie. Oh, you'll have to buy the koozie to find out Ooh. what kind of exclusive video goes with it. That is a hell of a idea, though. All pre-orders for the koozie will come with a coupon code for exclusive content from Riley Reed. And hey, we're going to enjoy a nice podcast now, so see you later. I'm proud to be an American. I am. I like America. USA. George Washington. Bald Eagle. Four Loco USA, baby. Okay, people, we are back with another episode of Only Stands. We now have a, I guess, recurring guest. You're one of my first guests ever, which was very nice. Yeah, of you. I came like on with two Adam years ago. a long, yes. long time ago. That was very nice. It was like two, two and a half years ago. Yeah. And I was so scared. And I'm still scared. You're very intimidating. Me? Yes. I walked into this room and I was like, I am so nervous to do your podcast, even though I do a porn podcast every week for the last two years. Yeah, you quite literally do this podcast in just a sufficiently better, extremely better way to do it than I do it. Or do you wish you were getting laid at the end of every episode? <sighs> if it wasn't on camera, maybe. If it wasn't on camera. I don't know if I need to make a sex tape after every episode, but that's I guess what, we could talk about do. plug talk immediately, but oh. we'll hold that off. We yeah, we can, we can wait. Yeah. But um, so Lena, nice to have you on. Yeah. When you first came on, that was like maybe like the fifth episode I did. I was, I was just so nervous. You really popped off. I did. All right. Like, yeah, you scared me. Like I've seen you at AVN from a distance and I'd be like, oh, and I'm too scared to even say hi to her. What? I don't know. Like just, before you had met me, that's how you No, felt? like this. No, I have I wasn't going to AVN for fun before I you started weren't? doing this podcast. No. You weren't like trying to get the girls autographs and stuff. I, no. Were you not like a porn fan not before really, you started honestly, this? No. Not, not one girl that you no. knew the name of before this? Um, before this, Lisa Ann. Probably. Okay. I, but I wasn't really a big porn fan. Like I just, honestly, I literally started doing this because I was, I was a fan of OnlyFans. Like OnlyFans okay. is great. It's just, it's got, got that more lore of like, I just love seeing boobs basically. Okay. Is, is the gist guy. Of it. I like seeing boobs and like OnlyFans is this thing where all these Instagram models are making OnlyFans now. So then I thought it'd be a funny joke to just make a blog, like a funny blog on Barstool about like my OnlyFans power rankings of the week, my top five okay. favorite OnlyFans girls of the week. Made a blog. One of them posted it. I mean, one of them posted it on their story after the blog went up that I put in there. And then she DMs me. She's like, oh, I'm in New York. If you ever want to collaborate on something, let me know. So my buddy was doing a show at the time, like a daily show interviewing um, any different random occupations. Mm -hmm. He was out one day. He was like, you want to do it? I said, sure. I said, can I write this only fans chick on just talk just talk to her see what it's like so she came in she had very large boobs it did well that show usually got like 3k views like not a lot of views and then her episode in like three hours got like fifty thousand. and i was like oh okay you figured this, it this out this seems like this seems like secret unlocked are horny. shockingly boobs. enough people are boobs horny. do well but uh yeah so that's how we started what? like trying to push them together no 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 you're good you're great <laughs> but um that's pretty much it so i will ask every um first time not first time guess, second time guest Every first time guest, first time solo on the show, I always ask, um, where are you from? I am from Glendale, California, not far from here. Okay. It is like outside of LA, 200,000 people, mostly Armenian. I am Armenian. Ooh. Um, You know, Kardashian, System of a Down, yeah. Lavash, I don't know, Dolma. 200,000 people, that's a pretty legit city. Yeah. That's probably a good little trivia question. Yeah. Like highest populated city starting with letter G, it might be Glendale. I feel like our reputation is for having really bad drivers. Okay. My people, they like to race. The Armenians? Yes. Yes. 
they like to get expensive fast cars that they can't afford and like you know oh yeah you know, that happens to me a lot because I, I live on long island so okay. i'm gonna work in the city and i'll be like uber and home late at night there's a lot of street racers around mm -hmm. and i bet some of them are armenians possibly i picture them like being armenians or like korean guys i don't know why they look like mafia guys they like gel their hair back yeah. and they wear gold chains chest hairs out i do kind of feel all like black. i do kind of feel like the armenians have like taken a sense of being fake italians you've kind of like yes you could like run they aspire pizza places for that. Mm -hmm. and stuff oh yeah we yeah. definitely have a lot of armenian parents like running pizza spots hey, out you're here you're welcome from the italians to the armenians oh yeah thank you you're welcome we take some from the greeks a little from the italians you know you kind of have a little greek look to you do i i do i mean you do i am uh, i'm greek i'm 25 percent greek oh you've been to italian, greece 25 greek no i gotta go i've never i've never been to, I've never been to armenia I've so i've been to europe where is you never here? been to to Europe? I've been to London once. Outside of that, that's all I've been to. You like made a pit stop. I always you say throw? I want to do like, I want to go to Europe and be like an old man. Like I want to go to World War II spots. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. And I want to go to I want to go to Normandy. I think that'd okay. be really cool. Your like history guy. To, yeah, I like World War II a lot. Well, it's a great place to go if you like history because that's like yeah. it's all museums and beautiful mm -hmm. palaces and, and shit. Then, yeah, I want to do like Germany. Yeah. Not, like, not that I want to check out the. Nazi stuff, but I think no. Cool but like, see. there's like a lot of very cool Holocaust museums yeah. with a lot of rich Auschwitz history. And Poland would be cool to yeah. see. I, I just like that stuff. Like recently, I was in Dallas, and I had to make it a point to go to where JFK got shot. Okay, to that museum, great museum. I bet you weren't the only young guy there. It's not like only old well, man shit, right? Let me tell you, that place it opened at 10 a.m. I was there at 10:01. Love it. It was packed. Yeah, you got to get in early. It was packed. It was very informative. Great museum. They had like the little set. They had the nest where he shot JFK from. It was cool. No one's expecting this on the porn pod, but here we are. No, I don't want to fuck porn. Who cares about porn? <laughs> okay, good. But um, what do you like? What do you What do you like? Are you like history? Like you, TV? What What gets you going? Ooh, okay. So, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. Like most people, just watch it and then mm -hmm. kind of like scroll their Twitter feed after. I watched the episode and then I listened to three different podcasts about it, one of which is four hours long. Okay. So when House of the Dragon or Game of Thrones is airing, like I have no other media that I am consuming during that week. Like I, I usually listen to like the New York Times podcast and stuff. I'm like, fuck the smart shit. I am listening to fantasy stuff. So this is interesting to me. So you're Thrones person, obviously, not just House of Dragon. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I was a huge throne person. I was like you. I was like, when it was on, I was deep in the Reddits, like yeah, figuring yeah, yeah. out like the theories, mm -hmm. R plus L equals J, <laughs> yes, all that yes. jazz, fucking Frey Pie, all that shit. I, I was deep. Me and my friends had a group chat. Our group uh, chat was called The North, The Real invite North. Invite me. We had, we had everything. We had, we were so into it, just conspiracizing, conspiracizing, whatever. Sure, great word. Inspiring Let's use about it. everything. And then it ended, and I was like, God, that was disappointing. But now my other best bud is actually watching for the first time. So I've been <gasps> watching some episodes with, with him, him as he watches along. He actually just finished season seven. He's on his flight here right now, and he's going to watch the last season today. So, so uh, I'm excited to talk about that. Are you going to um, buy him something for, like, at the end? He can eat, like, a cake to, like, uh, be sad. To just be, I mean, so we got to talk about it. What, what was your take on the end? Okay, so I, I feel like at the time was naive and was like, oh my God, yay, they're finally all together. But now that I have so much more knowledge and have listened to all these podcasts with like deep nerdy fantasy people who have been reading all types of fantasy their whole mm. life, they're like, well, how did the, the long night end in one night? And I'm just like, you're fucking right. Like, why didn't I think about all this stuff? So it is upsetting and I'm still holding out for Winds of Winter and the other book that's supposed to come out after that, even though yeah. I feel like... No offense, George is getting really fucking yeah, old. Uh, and he's not in the best shape, respectfully to him. Dude, I read his blog every time he puts a new post out and I'm just like waiting for the announcement. But just thinking about it, like seeing your, because I almost hated it so much. That, like I just tried to like men in black it where like I forgot about it. Okay, because so you're so deeply it, wounded. I, yeah, like I was so excited for it. And then just stupid shit like season eight, episode one, literally this army of zombies is coming that's yeah. going to kill everybody. And John and Danny are just taking a joyride on Dragon. Yeah. Like, even something as simple as last night, my buddy watched the episode where they go beyond the wall to get the white. And they, the dragon gets killed with a spear where the Night King just tosses a javelin, just has a javelin ready to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it's like too obvious. And then, like, and then they make the dragon go in the water. Then, out of the blue, these whites have this huge chain that they're dragging him out with. I'm like, why can't they just make the dragon just fall on the ground and the Night King just walk over and like touch it? And then the eyes turn blue. It yeah. Just random shit like that that just, I don't know. I agree. I'm also a little upset with like House of the Dragon too. Like it feels like watched. they you haven't watched it at all. No. Okay, it's it's good. I'm too scarred. It, I okay, I feel you. Have you read the book? Did you read no, I'm not Fire and Blood? Reader. You're not. Okay, Fire and Blood's one book. 
Is, is that like one it's, like a one-off book about the House of Dragon stuff? Yes, oh, okay. but it's written as a history text, so it is dry because it's just like someone recounting the history of oh, those years. Cool. So it's not like Danny's perspective than you know Cersei's perspective. It's but he is dropping the sequel to that, and it's going to be called. Guess for it. Guess what it's being called? House of Dragon. Blood and fire instead of fire and blood. No way. <laughs> That's what he said. I, and there's something I just don't like. I've never liked um, prequels. I just I feel like they're kind of pointless because I know what eventually happens in the future. If that makes that stupid, but like, I think you would Saul, enjoy it. I watched. think you should give it a chance. Um, I'm trying to think about like like the Sopranos movie stunk. Dude, I watched every season of The Sopranos except for the final season during the pandemic. And I feel like I'm an idiot for doing that. But it was d- double as many episodes as Wait. all the other seasons. Hold the phone. Yeah, Hold I know. You did this during the pandemic. Yes. And you- I was pregnant. I almost named my daughter Meadow. <laughs> it's a great name. Great name. But so you just never. I know. I know. I know. It's really fucked up. I, now it's like I forgot everything. It's four years later, my heart's like beating that you've never. How have you never done that? And somehow I managed to like start and finish Grey's Anatomy. That's like 87 seasons. It's so many seasons. That would, that would like tear out my soul to not know how it ends. I don't know. You want me to tell you right now? I'm a little afraid. You want me to tell you? What happens? Does he kill himself? It goes to black. What does that mean? It goes to black. No one knows what happens. That's the, that's the best part of it. You've never heard like the whole controversy around the Sopranos ending? No. So literally the show ends. There's a war between New York and New Jersey. Okay. A um, few guys get whacked. Bobby Bacalieri, Bobby Bacalot, dead. Silvio, okay. possibly dead. And then Tony's alive. The show ends. Meadow, Tony, Carmela, and AJ, they're at a diner. AJ, Meadow, sorry, AJ, Tony, and Carmela are at a diner. Meadow's parking across the street. She runs into the restaurant. There's a guy at the like, front of this place. He walks in the back door into the bathroom. And then the show goes black. So we don't know what happens so in no that room. What happens. Why it's, are people not in uproar about this? It's heavily implied that that guy that walks by them kills, kills Tony. Kills him. It's heavily implied, but no one knows. Do we think he also kills Meadow? Do we think he's that messed up? That's an interesting. That, that's like against the rules in the mob. Ah, like, okay. Definitely not. But um, it's implied that he killed Tony because like there's a scene earlier in the season six, which you didn't see somehow. But um. Where, to- where Tony and Bobby are fishing and they're talking about what happens when you die. And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, I think it just fades. Like it just cuts to black. Everything okay. is black. And then some foreshadowing here. There's a scene where Silvio is at, at dinner with a guy and he gets killed in the restaurant, the other guy. And Silvio, like, you just see the volume goes numb. So there's like no volume and it cuts to black, kind of. So everyone implies that it cuts to black and Tony gets killed. You're saving no really me so knows. much time here. You got to watch it, though. It's a, Okay, it's okay, awesome. okay. I mean, it's The Soprano. Oh, my God. Yeah. I know, I know. There's, like, those shows that just have so many references in pop culture yeah. that you just have to see. Like, I've never seen The Truman Show. Like, there's a certain... I've actually never seen that either. Okay, we, we should go watch it and talk that's about the, it later, that's with That's the Jim Carrey movie? Yeah. With, like, Bill, is Bill Murray? No, Bill Murray's Lost Translation. I feel like Truman Show is on flights, and I never watch it on flights for some reason. I still haven't seen Barbie. I feel like I'm really just, like... Yeah. Eh, so no, far. not good. Get okay. So basically in my free time, that's the kind of shit I like to do. I garden. That's nice. Um I was really into building Legos for a while. I have a bunch of sets I that I haven't that opened fun. up. It is fun. I love puzzling. And so like it's kind of like a puzzle, but it's just 3D. I may get into Legos. I need a hobby. I don't have any hobbies. You don't have any hobbies. I feel like you do. No. This is a hobby. You you're into sports, you're into pop culture stuff, you're into like I don't find that like a hobby though. You don't think like so? an activity, like doing a Lego would be nice. Like if I'm if it's a Tuesday night and I'm not doing anything, mm-hmm. like I'll just sit in my bed and watch YouTube videos. Okay. That's what Adam and does every goes, night, yeah, literally for the last eight years. Videos. No, he watches like weird shit, but like what? I love cooking videos. Yeah, they're the best. Um what were we watching the other night that I got really sucked into? Oh, it was like a, a twenty minute video of this guy basically getting confronted by the cops that they found out that he was the killer of like his wife's Ooh. parents and like grandparents or something, but like they, they had the body cam footage, so it was, like, great. Because we're... Okay, this is why we got into it. Netflix documentaries are too long now, and they're all episodic, and they're filler episodes, and they're wasting our yeah. time. And, like, documentaries before Netflix were, like, very highbrow. If you knew about them, if you watched them, you're like, oh, I love documentaries. That's my thing. Everyone would, like, wait for this cool documentary to come out. And every minute of the documentary meant something. It was critical information. And now in the documentaries, they're just interviewing anyone. I think I subconsciously feel that way about Netflix too. Like if a documentary is on Netflix, I think in my brain, I'm immediately saying it's like a lesser documentary. Yeah. Now. Like I picture if there's a HBO documentary, yeah. that's like 
good. Yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Hulu. Yeah. Yeah. So you know it's what I like a lot? What? The cock. Peacock. Peacock. Okay. Great streaming service. Never subscribed to it before. Oh, it's fantastic. I love Peacock. There's so many streaming services. I've been paying for so many that I just don't even know I'm paying They're for all, at this point. I, I honestly love them all. Honestly, you know it's a good show that I've been watching recently? What? That new Vince Vaughn show, Bad Monkey. You got to watch that. There's Okay, I'm going to text you after this, and yeah. you're just going to give me a list oh, of I stuff. I have a list of everything. You want to see a list of my favorite restaurants, movies, TVs, everything? Yes, because otherwise I'm just going to end up scrolling on my phone repeatedly tonight yeah. doing nothing. I got shows. You know what's a good TV show that I always suggest to people? Here's my little list of good shows. But, wow. Um, this one, 11 63 It's about um, going back in time and stopping the JFK assassination. Oh. Great show. How do you, you just like scroll and finally find something, you click it, you go in, or do you get like recommended stuff by Twitter? That, or I actually, or... um, that was a while ago. It came out probably maybe 10 years ago. It was a James okay. Franco show and I just watched it when it came out and that rocked. I love, I like historical fiction kind of. Yeah. Like uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter is one of my favorite movies. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I know what it is, it's but awesome. I have not seen it. It's great action. Like I love, I love like when people take history and switch it up a little bit, but like make it kind of realistic. Okay. So that's why I kind of feel like I like Game of Thrones. Which yeah. a lot of the stories are based on actual wars in history. Yeah. Like Same with House of the with Dragon. My, with my buddy last week when we were watching Battle of the Bastards, I was like, you know, this actually happened. With yes. the, like, the mode of bodies. That was so good. Yeah. That was, it makes me sad to think about how bad Thrones ended because like I remember moments like that, Battle of the Bastards, like I was preparing to watch it. Like it was, like th- my team was in the Super Bowl. Like that, <laughs> that's how like, how, ha- like yeah. how excited I was. Like my heart was beating. Yeah. It was. It, it was, was such peak, a good time. It was peak television. It was so good. Anyway, this is an OnlyFans <laughs> podcast, so I got to ask you some OnlyFans <laughs> we questions. We talked about Game of Thrones for 10 minutes. I got to ask you some OnlyFans <sighs> questions, but... Um, okay. How's that been going? You got, you got Plug Talk. So you, I'm assuming you post Plug Talk on OnlyFans, on OnlyFans. So yeah, I have my own account that I've had since before the pandemic, maybe like 2018, I got on OnlyFans. And then during the pandemic, Adam and I had the idea to start a joint OnlyFans, but it would be like a mix of our two businesses because he's always had a podcast. I've always made porn content. And so we put the idea together. We're going to interview a girl and have sex with her at the end. Um, Pretty cutting edge idea. For those keeping track at home, that's what they do. That is what what we do. My husband and I interview a girl for like 30 minutes, just like this. But then we have sex at the end. Yes. Which we don't do here. So good good, good on you guys for making a good idea. (laughs) But um, it's been fun. Yeah, it's been fun. Do you have any like any dream plug talk guests? Yeah, I'm gonna call my friend Tiana Trump out. Tiana Trump, I want to fuck you still. But she's never come on. She's never come on. She's like, she's. I'm gonna. I'm, I feel Why okay not? saying this because she's my friend. But she's she's like flighty, you know. She's just she's wherever. Flaky kind. Yeah. Whatever. Kind of like I. I wouldn't even. You, like, you yeah, can look flaky, at your phone and she'll be in like the Philippines she, or something. She's just doing her. She's just doing herself. She's doing her life. And honestly, she, I feel like she doesn't even need to shoot. She's good. She's so popular. Yeah. She's so successful. Her name just sells itself. You know. So, it is a great name. Yeah. So Tiana Trump, that's number one. Interesting. There's, um, <laughs> you know, but you thought this is going to sound stupid. It's obviously never going to happen. And I don't want it to happen. But there's a running joke in my group chat that we, they always say the funniest thing in the world would be if I went on Plug Talk. Do you want to come on? <laughs> no. Maybe like you can interview Adam and I while we have sex. It could be like the only stands crossover <laughs> that's episode. Me. My friends always say that would be like the funniest scenario of all time if I went on Plug Talk. <laughs> But obviously that's never gonna happen. I mean, like I'd be sucking dick and you'd ask me a question and I'd have to like stop and answer yeah. the question. And then I, I, it's like a good challenge. It would be funny if like maybe like almost Game of Thrones desk, I could have like a champion for me. Like I could bring a champion. Okay. Like I'd be like, I would be Tyrion and then someone else would be over in Martel. Like I'd have to send a girl in to be my champion. Who would you pick? <sighs> that episode crushed me, by the way. I couldn't unsee the Literally, like huh? gore of the eye yeah just crushed got... literally <laughs> i also forgot they all I, I'm getting back to thrones. i know i know i also <laughs> forgot season eight because i watched my i've been watching a little bit so i watched the finale by myself because my friend isn't up to it yet i forgot that they almost made him do that again he almost did that to the hound and the end when they were on the tower <sighs> he like so close to squashing his face too i'm scarred good stuff good stuff but um okay so tiana trump plug talk i uh, fucked like all of the biggest and best girls mm-hmm. i fucked them multiple times you know Congrats. if you guys have any requests of people i should be fucking please let is me know is there someone in the top of your head that is the best at it the best at it who's the I best mean, threesome partner that you've had it's not shade to anybody that's not but like who's someone that pumps in your brain she's she was great 
there's girls I have a lot of fun with and it's funny because it's like it's it is based on some of the sexual aspects of like how they touch me or how they kiss me but a lot of them is based on like the interview and how fun a girl is or how much I just like vibe with her which Adam as a dude doesn't really need any of that he's like I could fuck any hole of course and I'm like oh she was so sweet or she was so cool or she complimented me or whatever Carmen Karma you have to have her on one day she's the best I've been fucking her forever she loves girls it's really obvious when she's like with you her eyes are locked in with you um she's a lot of fun she's also fucking crazy she tells great stories and I mean I'm sure you're sick of saying it or I'm sure you're sick of hearing it because everybody loves Angela White but like everything that anyone has ever said about Angela White is absolutely true she just has a way of touching someone. I want it on record. Like, I'm not sick of hearing it. You're not sick of hearing she's it. The okay. Best. She's an angel. Like, she is everyone's favorite and she is at the top because she's really that good. She's an angel. Yeah. She's an angel. Um, I actually have some behind the scenes plug talk questions. Oh. So like if you throw on an episode of plug talk, I've noticed like it cuts away and then it cuts back to How much are you watching? Not very often. Because okay. It's a girl I like. I I have watched. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um like what happens when when you're like, oh, let's do this. What's that next five minutes like? What do you mean? Like while we're fucking? No, I'm saying like, cause it cuts into like the sex part. Oh, okay. So a lot of this just has to do with, it's so stupid. Um, when we do the podcast, we're wearing these like really nice fancy like mics so that the audio quality is really great. The guy who films for us is like an audio nut and he would hate if the podcast. Does the, does, is the guy who films it the same man that films the porn part or is it different people? It's the same guy. Nice. Multitask. So, so yeah, he's like, he bought these mics like specifically for us so we could have this like great quality. I feel like Lizzie McGuire in the Lizzie McGuire movie when I'm mm. wearing it, just like a pop singer. But the reason that we have that cut to the sex is just because we have to like rearrange the set and remove yeah. those mics. That- we have like dreams of just fucking right from the podcast part. We think that that would be great. But yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, I was saying like, what's the, what's the bridge? I go is, brush is my that teeth. Awkward, like five minutes, like oh, no, me and the girls going. Everybody's day going. Brush our teeth like and that. you know yeah. stuff like that. Well, we already do all that stuff at the beginning because we take photos, we're chatting, we're you know. And what's the schedule like? What do you mean? Like, how often are we doing it? Yeah, like I'm just like I'm doing eight of these in two days. Like, what are you? What are, what's your schedule? It's just mostly obviously LA based. So whenever people are here, hop on. I would say we shoot six to ten times a month. And the most fucked up weeks are the times where it's like these girls are visiting from out of town. We got to cram them into this week. And so it's like maybe we're doing plug talk five days that week. And that's like a lot because then it feels like a job versus if we do it more sporadically. Really, really love it. Um, But yeah, I would say it's like one to two times a week. But some days we do like two episodes. In a day? In a day. Whoa. Yeah. That's rock and roll. Yeah. And anybody good on, on the horizon coming on? God, forgive my brain for not remembering all that. Like, I'm like, wait, when did I fuck her? I'm like so bad because I just because I'm assuming you're making so some episodes as well. Yeah, yeah, we have to. Yeah, I mean, there's been times where it's like we couldn't shoot for two months because something going around in the industry or everyone's getting fucking I sick. Have them in the bank. You have to AVN. A lot of people take off time for like that whole month. Mm-hmm. Um, I try not to shoot the two weeks after AVN because I feel like everyone has a lot of germs. Ooh, I feel like everyone's intermingling at ABA. Not just that, but like all the fan interaction, you know? Yeah. I actually got the worst like flu of my life after this last AVN. And it's like I'm talking to thousands of people and they're spitting on me. And, you know, yeah, it's it like, doesn't yeah. shock me. AVN's an interesting place. Are you, are you calling it gross? It's it's gross. <laughs> You're calling it gross. It's, it's gross. I mean, I love meeting the fans. You know, it's like sometimes I just feel like this girl who, who posts a couple photos. I don't really like look at my likes or anything anymore. You know, I'm eight years in I'm just like okay updating and then I go to Avian and I'm like holy shit people are people are looking at those pictures people like me they're yeah. here they're yeah, here to see me to see. you know Even it's like here. that real life confrontation I was out at Six Flags the other night and some kid just walked by me and he's like I don't well not kid I think it was like probably 18 but it's like tell Jason Love I said hi and I'm like oh fuck all those memes like you know pe- people saw them they weren't just like yeah. likes on a page that really was like an iconic meme an iconic, iconic. It will follow me for the rest of my life, I think. It's, it was iconic. It, that was like in the, that's, that will forever be in the annals of the internet. Forever. You don't like that? That's, that's a great, it's that's just, a great meme. It is great. I'm so happy. It made me a lot of money. But it's like, I just can't believe it happened, you know? Because I didn't have any intentions of making it happen in that way. I just like, like I said, post something, walk away. Yep. And the internet did its own thing. Yeah. That was, that was a stunning time on the interwebs. Yeah. 
but hey, we're past it. Yeah. Um, interesting. You have any um odd AVN stories off the top of your head? So you're like, oh, that was freaking creepy. Um, I won't say creepy, but I signed at Riley Reed's booth in 2020 in January, so right before the pandemic. Um, and this guy came up to us at the booth and he was just like, Riley, will you just please spit in my mouth? And I was like, oh, holy shit. Like, these guys are nuts. They fucking love her, which I knew. She had a fat line. Like, everyone loves Riley Reed. But she, like, curled on top of the podium at our booth and had the guy get right under her and open his mouth. And she just hawked to it. Into she it. hawked to it? She did it. Oh, yeah. It and I was, and he, it was a loogie. He was, like, so happy. He was, like, reveling. No. You know? Good for him. And I'm I was like, form. damn. Like, that guy it? paid, like, a few hundred dollars to get into yeah. this place. And that was like the ultimate best thing that could have happened to him, short of like fucking one of the girls, you know? That, that, that's that's a home run for him. Yeah. I'm happy for him. And, but um And I feel like I'm like freaky, but like not that freaky. Mm-hmm. You know? So I was like, good for him. I think this year actually there was a girl that was doing spitting she had a spitting booth, I'm pretty sure. And we filmed it. Oh. And then this guy was there, he was a fan of me, and he was like drunk or whatever, and we were at the spitting thing, and this girl had a booth that was spitting. I was like, I'll pay for you to spit in this guy's mouth. And he was like, fuck you, yeah, let's do it. Did it. And then, remember that? And then he freaking made us, uh, respectfully, he like emailed me the next day, like, please don't post that. Like, I, I was like, yeah. yeah, a lot of these guys have like regular jobs, you know, and this is like their bachelor boy weekend yeah, yeah, and like, they're he, going to Vegas and doing crazy Vegas things. And then they have to go back to their like yeah, normal he, I lives. I a nice email. So I was like, yeah, right, I'm not going to put that in. But yeah. the girl did have a booth set up for spitting. See, I am, ugh, I'm a germaphobe. I don't know if I could do all that spit in my yeah. mouth. All right, we got like 10 more minutes here. I do have to ask you a question that I ask every guest. Um, you have any like OnlyFans subscriber requests that are a little wild? I feel like they're probably not like wild to you because you've heard it all at this point. Um, but I have really ugly feet. I, I, I would say they're pretty they, ugly. They look like feet. They're nice feet. I mean, I, I think like compared to like a lot of other feet that you would see in like a catalog for nail polish, they're like pretty ugly. Yeah. Guys love my fucking feet so, so maybe much. Maybe they're good feet. I just don't understand it. And it's funny because growing up, I don't know if it was like my mom's like weird little defense mechanism, but she'd see like a pretty girl and she'd just be like, I bet she has ugly feet. Like <laughs> kind of trying to like undercut the girl. And I, I always thought it was kind of weird, but I was like, I, I am that girl. I'm the pretty girl with the ugly feet and guys fucking love it. I think you need more foot confidence. They look like normal feet. <laughs> no, me and my friend were like <laughs> staring at our feet side by side and she will tell me the truth. She was like, girl, you got some nasty ass feet. You know what would compliment that flip flop nicely? A little ankle bracelet. Oh, mm-hmm. but they're so veiny, you know? Who's got better feet? Ew. Ew. I have a gross foot. No, you have a great foot. I For a guy? Foot. Bad foot. I'll take that. For I a guy, you have that. good feet. Um, I broke my toe. See, I broke this toe doing a fucking over the water obstacle course. Okay. I'm very proud of myself because yeah. I've, I've never done anything strenuous and strenuous enough fun. to break a bone. And now finally at age 33, I broke my toe and I hurt. feel it did fucking hurt. I've never broken a bone either. You've never broken a bone. No. I feel like you're doing like a lot of sports. I mean, you work at Barstool. I played um, baseball, basketball. Okay. Do you still play anything? No. Softball. Softball. You play? Um, every now and then. As a hobby. Yeah, it's a hobby. That's why you say I don't have any hobbies. It's only during summer, though. Because it's too cold to play otherwise? Yeah. Okay. New York, baby. But, um, yeah. You got any questions for me? Let me think. Have you ever slept with anyone that you've done the the podcast with? I have not. You've not? I have not. A lot of people have asked. Not them on the show. Like, everyone freaks out about, like, that's, like, the number one question people come up to me and talk about, honestly. Like, when I'm at a bar, it's either 50-50. Like something about Sunday conversation, or people will get really close to me. Like, I don't know. Like, have you? They'll be like, Glennie, between me and you, fucking those chicks. <laughs> like, it, ha- it happens to me every single. I was at my aunt's funeral last week. Sorry. And, and one of my like distant older cousins, like an older man, 60 years old, hits me like, you, you banging those chicks? I was like, bro, just fucking read the room. We're at a funeral right We're now. We're all crying. <laughs> it's it, and ridiculous. Like, everybody does it. And I'm just like, I'm frankly, brother, I'm not. They're like, this is what I would do if I had a podcast where I fucked, you know, in their brain whores. Yeah. Have any of the girls propositioned you? Um, on the show or like after like, the show? I feel like girls have like a game sometimes where they're like, want to see if they could get a guy to fuck them. Have any girls tried to play that game with that you? Was like the, that was like the theme of the show early on was like oh, all okay. the girls were like, like the first episode I had, 
was this girl Jeannie Exum. You ever see her? Mm-mm. She um she like asked me to be in her OnlyFans videos. I said okay. no immediately, and that clip got like ten million views on TikTok. So. I then, once did a YouTube video where they asked a guy a hundred dollars or blow up from one of the plug and he took the hundred dollars <laughs> and it was one of my most defeating moments. Well, in fairness, it's not like you were next to him. I was right there. I was uh, in the room. <laughs> he was just looking at me. Oh, I wasn't actually going to give him the blow job. I would take the hundred bucks too. But it's a good fiscal choice. He didn't get the hundred dollars. It was a hypothetical question. Oh, Glennie. oh, okay. Well, it's bad business by him. But um, I was hurt. Yeah, that makes sense. But no, I mean, mostly. So then she said that in the first episode. So a lot of girls always like would offer like, oh, like you want to fuck me like on camera? I'm just always like, no, they would only fuck you on camera. Um, they want to fuck you for clout. That's what they say, like on the show. Yeah. And then, you know, what's one thing I do think I would be good at. That would be fun. I've offered I've not offered. I've said this to a few girls on the show. It would be fun if we did like, you know how people are doing OnlyFans lives now? Yeah. I would like to be like the auctioneer of the OnlyFans live. <laughs> One booty spank like, going like, for like five twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. We got twenty bucks for booty spank. Twenty bucks for booty spank. And then we got like oh, twenty five for makeout. Twenty five for makeout. Anybody fifty for makeout. Fifty for makeout. This is a really funny idea. I think it would be fun. I think it would make a good amount of money. The funny thing is, like the guys who are viewing the live are going to be like deep in their jerk off. Yeah, and then they have to hear your voice. Like I, like I would picture like basically like me here, and then like two girls here. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not involved in it at all, but I'm just like. I'm the one. I would love to have you as a mediator it. because sometimes like those guys are just like waiting for someone else in the room to tip all the money to yeah. get like the action going. So if you could like, you know, I think encourage idea, them a little bit. And then also your voice would help them edge because they wouldn't be able to nut proper. Mm-hmm. So that'd be great for them. It's an interesting idea. I like it. I'll think about it. But um, yeah, outside of that, no, I have not romanced anybody from the show. Okay. Who knows? Have you like tried to rack your brain to figure out like what your version of your OnlyFans account would be so that you could get some of this pie. I mean, I don't think I'm ever going to make a sex date. The first thing my mom said when I started doing it <laughs> was like, just promise me you won't make a sex date. Don't like, no, put your dick online. Like, you know that's fair. But I don't, I don't think I need to right now, but I've been trying to think what I would post on my OnlyFans. Do you know, can you do crossover lives with people? Like if it was my OnlyFans and yours, could we like do a crossover live? Mmm. No, what most people do is they just like if I was to go live with a girl, we would like pull up our laptop side by side. Mm. Um, I have heard of like one account that's like a brand account who gets other people to do lives on their page and then they like split the money. So, Interesting. but you would have to like get your account to be the pretty big. Idea would be nice. I think I think I could do a good OnlyFans just like me like hanging. Out. People like just like me hanging out with hot women. Yeah, but you would have to like make really good content of you hanging out with hot woman and then not want to put it on your regular social media, which I feel yeah. like would be hard to hold back. You know, I think I could do that. You think you could Fuck do it? Social media. Like, Hey, want to hang out with me for my only fans? Yeah. Literally just hang out. And like, I don't know. Fucking flash me one time or something like that. I yeah. Like idea. you could find your one thing. Like I went yeah. on, a, um, I did like a fishing trip with this girl where we went to catch fish, but then we were just like oh, well, I would do that playing show. topless roulette. You did it. I did that show with Emily. Yeah. Love Emily. Love Emily. She's one of my favorite people I've had on. Really? Yeah, she's great. I so I like used to work at this social media company and they like moved her into my room. This is like 2016. Yeah, didn't, yeah don't you guys have like some- We have like a past, way yeah. Way back story or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, she's probably gonna hate me for saying this, but I have like a really viral video on my YouTube channel. It's probably privated now. It's like, I let my best friend have sex with my boyfriend and it was her. Nice. Yeah, so that went viral, yeah. but- She's great. Also, I love one, her. Of the, one of the more beautiful people I know. She's Dude, so hot. I know. Every time I see her posts, I'm like, yeah. How are you, how are you so perfect? How yeah. are you fucking real? Truly, and that fishing show was fun. Yeah, I had fun. Who'd you go on with? Was it? Then, it was just me and else? her. Would, so that what did you do? Like the thing, whole thing where you had to like flesh if you got a fish or something. That was her thing. She was there was like certain fish that if we caught them, they like we had to flash. Like it didn't count because they were like shitty yeah. fish or whatever. A, we played like the stripper. What did you do? I, you, it was awesome. I sat there and drank. And just, all these chicks just kept taking their tits out. It was the oh, best I ever. And you just got to hang out. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. She was like, "You want to be a guest?" I was like. Yeah. You didn't have to take your top off? No, I mean, I had my shirt off anyway. I'm a big shirt off guy. If I'm oh, at the beach great. or water. That's great. But, uh, so I literally just sat there and it was her, two other girls, and they just kept getting naked. It was great. Hell yeah. It was a lovely great, day. Great day for you. It was a great day. One of the best, one would say. But um, it's about two o'clock. We got to get you out of here. Oh, okay. Any, um, any final words, final questions? If you start watching House of the Dragon, I'd like to be added to the group chat because I went to a, a, a House of the Dragon podcast by myself in L.A., like just to see show? if yeah yeah like nice. the po- like I, the podcast I listen to I don't know if I can mention other networks but 
Yeah, right. The Ringer has a great pod, and like they had like a live show out here, and I like went by myself and trying to like find any friends I could make to be in a group chat with for Game of Thrones Sadly, or House our, of the our Dragon. Game of Thrones chat's dead. It was it was the Thrones chat. It was called it was called the True North. The True North. Yeah, I'm gonna send you a topless selfie, and I'm gonna have you send it in the chat. And be like, can we revive the chat? She wants to join. I could send them one right now. <laughs> but um, let's see. So did they all refuse to watch House of the Dragon? I'm so interested in this. Um, some of them do, I think. Yeah, and the North, the real North. Here it is. Damn, last message is oh, like... Oh, the last message was Rhaenyra is so bad. See, they were talking some dragons in here, actually. Dude, Rhaenyra, like, she makes me want to be lesbian. That preview looks so fucking good. So this, they, maybe they're still talking in here every now and then. Okay. I don't really know. But yeah, that's my chat. There's going to be another show. They're, they're planning a lot of spinoffs. You're going to have to get over it. I am a friggin', um, I'm a John Stan. They, they, I think they nixed that show. I, Snow. I, I was sad they nixed it because I'm, I'm a basic bitch. I just love John. If they started that show up and they didn't cast Kit Harrington, how would you feel? Nah, it would have worked. I, I agree. That. I agree. It you wouldn't can't work. Do that. I mean, I just fucking love John. John's the best. Like I was rewatching the Winds of Winter last week. Fucking, I was teared up when he, when, he, when they make him true, uh, king of the north. Did you watch the documentary that he did about the show? No. With all the crew and stuff? No, I, I've deleted it from my brain. I was oh, scared to watch it. You I, should I, watch it. It currently made me cry. my only relapse. But yeah, like like having Ned and Liana talking about him and then they cut to his face and then he gets crowned the king of the north. I was like, damn, that fucking got me. I got a little goosebumps. Yeah, I know. I know. That's I why you need John. to watch the doc. I'm a, I'm a John Stan. That's why, that was probably my biggest beef of the actual show and how it ended because fucking... He was this prince that was promised for nothing. Yeah. And they still talk about all that in House of the Dragon. Like it's still really? a running thing. And you're and it's it's kind of like a it reminder no of how sense. of how fucked the ending was because they're still like drilling it yeah. into our brain in this prequel stuff. And I saw on Twitter too, like obviously when the season ended, everyone was so pissed about how it ended. I was like, they're still doing it. They're still fucking you're doing it. Not gonna it. make everyone happy, but there's just like a lot of time jumps in House of the Dragon that I feel like made it really hard. I do for like that they mentioned thrones though. Yeah, because there's like some spinoffs I've seen where they where they just won't acknowledge the other show. Like, were you a Friends fan at all? Oh, Friends? No, yeah. I didn't watch it. So Friends, I love Friends, one of my favorite shows ever. Joey had a spinoff. It was called Joey. Okay. And they just never mentioned any of the Friends. It's how, never. I how is it even tied some, to like, it? Guest. He lives in New York, but in Joey, he actually moves out here okay. and becomes an actor. Well, he wasn't an actor, but stays an actor and like tries to live in L.A. And did the show was the show successful? No, two no. seasons canceled. It was like the worst show. They should have mentioned Friends. I agree. Anyway, thank you, Lena. Thank you. Is it Lena or Lena? It's Lena. You said it correctly. For that, you're the best. Appreciate that. Thank you for coming. And um, yeah, you have an open invite whenever we're in the same city. Yay! Good talk.